A very long day here in Southern California. This normally frenetic society tonight is operating in slow motion. The city is still in kind of a daze after a major earthquake this morning. 6.6 .6 on the Richter scale happened on about uh, 10 miles northwest of where I'm standing in the San Fernando Valley. And the devastation throughout the basin is considerable at this time. Los Angeles now is operating under a state of emergency. There is a dusk to dawn curfew ordered tonight by Mayor Richard Rudin. Many uh, homeowners are being told that they should boil their water. About a half million homes were without power for a while. We're now told that 60% are back. 24 to 27 people are dead. Also tomorrow, schools will be closed. This is the scene tonight at a park in the Sepulveda area. Those of you who are familiar with Los Angeles, that's just to the west of Van Nuys. Many people are camped out there tonight. Their homes are either so damaged that they don't want to go back in, or psychologically, they are so damaged that they don't want to go back in. That's happened to a, a lot of folks. Five major freeways have been hit, of course, as well. So that's the scene in Los Angeles tonight. To repeat, a state of emergency is in effect. We won't know until tomorrow the full extent of the damage to many businesses, because after all, this earthquake did happen during a major holiday. People were not able to get across the freeways to their businesses and certainly to many of the schools. For the past couple of years now, Los Angeles has been kind of a long-running, made-for-television disaster movie. The 92 riots, the fires in the fall of 1993, and now, at the beginning of 1994, this major earthquake. Here is how some of this day looked and sounded on television beginning early this morning. I would say... Back now at 747, there's been an earthquake in Southern California this morning in the Los Angeles area. We go on out to Burbank, and our producer there, Rick Romo. Ricky, what can you tell us? Hey, Brian. Well, hey, man, talk about a rude awakening out here. The strongest earthquake, and I've lived here all my life, it just kept punching. And this is a quake felt over a wide-ranging area, felt in Santa Barbara and Las Vegas to the north, Bakersfield to the east, and San Diego to the south. We have a 15-inch high-pressure feeder gas line. It's ruptured, and that's where these flames you see coming here, 50, 60, 70 feet in the air coming from. Okay, gas company's been notified, but I'm sure they got their hands full. Right now, to Santa Monica, the freeway is closed in both directions, east and westbound. It's going to be eastbound from the 405 freeway to La Brea and westbound from La Brea to the 405 freeway. Get a blank, uh, blank it out here. Sit down, okay? Break, break. Get over here. Get a jacket and a blank on the Due to the earthquake in the area you are calling, your call cannot be completed at this time. Please try your call later. Okay, get up over your head. Get up over your head. Get up over here. Get up over your head, dog. There's no response. You've got the whole load now. structure immediately adjacent to the Robinson's May in the Northridge Shopping Center that just collapsed completely upon itself uh, several floors of concrete coming down now the man or woman to trap the trap person could be in a vehicle as soon as the earthquake stopped they came and check up with my mom and dad <laughs> and then we saw a fire starting in the back building so I got them all out we were all on the street and all of a sudden explosions started going on and they went right into my mom's house, and everything started burning down. Everything is burnt. 
over. It felt like a big giant just grabbed the building and just tossed it around. I was I was sitting up watching the news, uh, the early morning news, and it felt like a big giant was just tossing the whole room around. I, I was scared. I didn't know realize what was happening at first. So when I did realize what happened, I jumped between the mattress and the box frame. When the freeway suddenly disappeared in front of him, he careened off the freeway. He was assisted uh, by several motorists, passers-by, who attempted to help him, but all of that regrettably proved futile. So I have a very, very, very large amwa in the bedroom. Very large, it's about seven foot high, very big and very heavy. Next thing I knew, it landed on my head, and I'm waiting now for stitches. We're fine. Everybody is fine. Don't worry about it. We're okay. What's your name? Okay, my Buzz Carmen, Bill Carmen. The Carmens are okay in California. We're fine. Don't worry. We're okay. Because it occurred in a densely populated area, it was an unusually destructive one. And we've all seen today uh, on our own televisions the buildings that have collapsed, the freeways turned into rubble, uh, the power has been cut off, that gas mains have exploded, and most tragically, many people have been injured and several lives have already been lost. Due to the damage caused by the earthquake, I have, by signing the document that I will sign at the end of this statement, declared these areas of California to be a major disaster. But again, all the major fires put out, that apartment building, the uh, Northridge Meadows apartment, is the worst scene of residences we've seen so far as far as trapped people. But we've got multiple homes up in the Silmar area, of mobile homes destroyed, I would say 30 to 40 homes destroyed up in the uh, Silmar area. And we've seen sporadic homes that, of course, their gas mains broke and caught on fire. And when that initial shock hits, the earthquake hits, you, you break those gas lines and they cause those initial fires, but you also may weaken some of those gas lines inside those homes and uh, have these fires that pop up hours, even maybe days later. But now we have to get to the hard work of cleaning up and bringing things back to where they are or where they were. And tonight, as I say, Southern California is in a bit of a daze. There's a kind of subdued festive era, I think, on the part of the people who were able to survive this earthquake today, even those who took a fair amount of property damage. This apartment building right behind me was the only one on the street that was hit as hard as this. Obviously, it did not meet the earthquake uh, building codes, even though it's not that old. NBC's Brian Williams is also with me. Tonight, he is in Pasadena, where a lot of local and federal and state officials are gathering to try to decide what the government can do on behalf of the people of Los Angeles. Brian, what's going on where you are? That's right, Tom, and good evening. Uh, they're still gathering. People are still flying in, a lot of them from Washington. But in effect, the third floor of this bank building here in downtown Pasadena will be the headquarters of the federal government for all the earthquake victims in the metropolitan Los Angeles area. President Clinton said today in the Oval Office that he probably shouldn't come out this soon because of all the uh, hubbub of activity it'll cause. So he is sending his emissaries, among them the S Secretary of Housing, Federico Pena, and Jim Lee Witt, the director of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Those, uh, both of those men will be here. We expect them within the next half hour. Uh, we have been driving uh, throughout the area. Earlier tonight, we were in Reseda. It was the site of a collapse at a medical facility. It's really a clinic, combination clinic and office buildings. These were the pictures shot after the collapse. Uh, Tom, we've been mentioning all day long, if there, uh, if there is any good news to be gleaned from all this, it is that this was a holiday and this tremor happened before dawn. Uh, had this been during business hours on a nine to five business day, you can only imagine the injuries, uh, possibly deaths that would have resulted uh, in that building, the Kaiser Permanente Clinic, the second floor in effect disappeared. It was uh, building collapsed upon itself, so the floors now go from one to three and uh, so on on up. A couple of the observations from the Los Angeles area tonight. Number one, of course, where the power is out, and that's just entire square miles. Uh, the danger is, of course, street lights. 
There is uh, quite a bit of congested traffic. People are running the lights. They aren't stopping. And the curfew is now in effect. Dawn to dusk, dusk to dawn, rather, uh, throughout most of the surrounding area. Tom, back to you. Brian, also the National Guard probably will be called into duty into the Southern California area to help uh, avoid any kinds of temptations of looting, although at this time, as I say, the area is pretty subdued. In the Northridge area itself, the damage seemed to be pretty episodic. Uh, one building would be down and then two blocks, what? Later, uh, buildings would be perfectly intact. Earlier, and they had said they were in need of doctors in this area because they didn't have any. There was only apparently one medical doctor at the facility at the time. Slowly, and, if, and this was a holiday, so if that's any indication, tomorrow is uh, probably going to be much worse. All right, thank Connie? you, Bill. Connie, let's go now to Harvey Levin of KCBS TV. Harvey is at that coll uh, collapsed apartment project in Northridge. Harvey? Well, Dan, the latest now is that 14 people have died in this apartment co collapse. Uh, the building behind me is a two-story building. It was a three-story building until uh, 4.31 this morning. Uh, the, the thunderous impact of this, earth, uh, this earthquake just uh, brought the building down. 14 people underneath, nine have been brought out, nine bodies. Uh, they expect... Almost that played itself out on television was this building collapse in Northridge. People watched throughout the day as rescuers pulled victims from the rubble. This person is alive. All right, now they're going to get some airbags in here to... Uh, lift up the uh, debris off the person. Freeways that were supposed to be earthquake proof collapsed in the quake. Here you can see what was once a four level intersection of interstates 5 and 14. Well, but to look at that now, I mean, it lasted maybe 30, 40 seconds. And uh, the devastation, this is reinforced, it is up to earthquake standards, and yet uh, it, it came down and came down apparently very quickly. Let's take a look here. This is a major rupture right here of the freeways. You can see, you can see the, the, uh, uh, the, re, the uh, rebar here bent like pretzels underneath and the, uh, the cement just completely stacked up. You can actually see the, uh, the roadway through there. A policeman who was rushing to the scene on his motorcycle wasn't able to stop in time. He was killed. The trucker driving this rig was much luckier. He was able to jam on his brakes and stop right at the edge. The house is just started collapsing and they're just or so fast that I really can't able to describe how bad it was. I'm okay. I'm bleeding all over, but I'm okay. Everything's gone. Our whole life's gone. Let's put it that way. But you and your wife are okay, aren't you? Thank God. The earthquake literally changed the size of the valley it shook. Seismologists say the quake pushed two mountains higher and closer together, making the San Fernando Valley narrower and changing Los Angeles forever. It has been, you see, a day that Los Angeles will not soon forget. It all began, as we pointed out, at 4.31 this morning. This is how it looked on the seismograph. This is KABC in Los Angeles. They always have a camera pointed to this seismograph so that they can seize this kind of picture. Very powerful. When we come back, more on the Los Angeles earthquake, a dramatic rescue, and an emergency room crisis. The California earthquake. This special edition of day one will continue in a moment. ...of a camera that has been set up in uh, WABC, or, or, or KABC, I should say, the Bureau in Los Angeles. They call this the Quake Cam. That is a seismograph. You're looking at a live picture. It has just moved past. See that uh, very dark, squiggly area? That is the aftershock that you heard Peter Jennings refer to just a few moments ago. And as you can see, as it, as it moves around there, there have been a number of aftershocks all throughout the day, and there will be more throughout the night. It is normal. It will continue for at least 72 hours after that first uh, devastating shock very early this morning in Los Angeles, 4.30 their time. Now, this is certainly one of the biggest stories of the day in an area of Northridge, which was the epicenter of the uh, earthquake, a collapsed apartment building. There, at least 14 people have been killed throughout the day. Television viewers were watching rescuers there at the apartment building as they poured through looking for uh, survivors. This is a live picture right now. Give you a sense of what this apartment building uh, experienced. The camera pulling back and showing John Hockenberry, who has been there reporting it. Uh, he's been covering the news throughout the day. Uh, John is devastating at this apartment building. 
it's incredible for us. 14 people did not make it out of this building alive. And, and certainly, if the scientists aren't aware of it, the people of this neighborhood are well aware of the fault line that lies underneath Northridge, California. There are about a half a dozen disaster relief personnel in there checking out the structure. It's considered to be very, very unsafe. All day today, local reporter Joe McMahon of KABC here in Los Angeles uh, was in this area looking at the damage that is here and all around this area. He, his